Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to Bible Time with Mrs. Barr. Today we are in Acts chapter 2 and we're going to look under the title of Peter Addresses the Crowd. But first we are going to start um, with prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the guidance and direction that it provides, Lord. And um, we just thank you that we can be in your word. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Let me grab our memory verse real quick. Our memory verse is Luke chapter 1, verses 3 through 4. Therefore, since I myself have carefully investigated everything, from the beginning, it seems good also to me to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theopolis, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. So, um, Luke was writing, Luke and Acts, so that Theopolis would know and understand what he was being taught even better. And that's why we study God's word, so that it's just not just reading it and be like, well, I don't understand it. Oh, well, no, we study it and we read it again and again and talk about it to better understand it. Okay, Peter addresses the crowd. This is starting at verse 14. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk. As you suppose, it's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken about by the prophet Joel. So he's like, dude, it's early. It's nine in the morning. There's no way that the reason that these people are speaking different languages and speaking in ways that they haven't before, it's not because they're drinking. It's something so much better than that. And, it, and he even says what we're going to read next. This was spoken of by the prophet Joel in the Old Testament. So you're Jews. You're supposed to know your Old Testament. You're supposed to know your Bible. This was spoken of. That's essentially what he was saying. Okay, starting at verse 17. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. So in the last days, which <coughs> started when Jesus went back up to heaven after dying on the cross. Verse 18. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will burn to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So all these wonders, all these things that they had never seen or experienced before were going to happen. And, um, and both men and women were going to experience it. Old Testament is all focused on the men. Now, women are mentioned but men are the focus. And God says, nope. It's all for all people of all time. And everyone who calls on him will experience this. 
will experience being saved. Verse 22. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him. As you yourselves know, this man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope, because you will not abandon me to the grave nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. <coughs> so David knew and understand that there was a Holy Spirit um, that was always with him and always there for him. And... Before that, it talks about how Peter confronts the Jews and says, Hey, you did this to Jesus. You were the ones that nailed him on the cross after he did all these miracles and all these wonderful things. But you might have nailed him to the cross, but God was not going to keep his son on the cross or in the grave. Verse 29. Brothers... I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God had raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the, promise, the promised Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. For all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them and pleaded with them. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accept his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. 
So there's just so much of, of what Peter goes through here. He, he goes back and he shares the gospel. He shares what Jesus had done um, for all people that would accept him. He talks about how um, the prophet David, you know, had passed away and had died, but yet he was able to see, um, thanks to the help from the Holy Spirit, of what would happen in the future, and that one of his descendants would sit on the throne forever. And, yeah, he just, he talks about Jesus' life and what, um, what he did for us and just everything that was accomplished and and the people chose to listen they said okay peter this has happened now what do i do where do i go what what's my role and he said repent and be baptized every one of you and so that's that's the mandate that we're given today is to listen to god's word take it into our hearts and minds and then turn around and repent and be baptized. So that is the next part of um, Acts chapter 2, and that's where we're going to stop today. So we'll talk to you next time. Bye. God bless.